Hi, welcome to PR Tech Talk. In this episode, we are going to take a look at the very interesting development board from ST Microcontrollers. It's based on an, their low power microcontroller, the STM32 U5 series. The, the board is a discovery kit for IoT and uh, it, it's packed with features and uh, wireless communication. Besides the STM32U5, it also contains uh, their new module for 2.4 GHz radio communication, which can be used to have communication set up on uh, thread, uh, 6 low pan, uh, Bluetooth and such. And in future releases, they will also release some matter on that device or a similar device. And it's a fully certified module. But that is only one thing that is interesting on this board. They also have a Wi-Fi module, uh, not from ST though, uh, they are not available or uh, on the market or yeah, we will see if that comes in the future for, with Wi-Fi, but still there is both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the board. And it's also packed with a lot of MEMS sensors and we will take a look at those and external memories and such. So it's a really beast to go through. So. Tag along and we will take a look at it. So here we have the board on uh, running some blinky code. And the MCU itself is this little guy here. And it's an STM32U5. Uh, it's a Cortex M33 microcontroller uh, running on 160 MHz, also enabling the thrust zone with floating points and memory protection unit and such. And uh, they also have some other features in it. It packs up to four megabyte flash uh, in a dual bank configuration and up to 2.5 megabytes of RAM. So it can be a real beast as well. In this slide, we see how the STM32U5 position itself Alongst the other STM32 low power microcontrollers that uh, already are in, in production. And it gives you with the highest uh, clock and also with the new Cortex M33, it gives you the highest uh, DMIPS value and also the lowest power. And also extends from 128k of flash up to 4 megabytes. So as I started with, uh, this device that is put here on the board, that device, is the STM32U585AII6Q. And this specific device uh, hosts 2 megabytes of flash and 786 kilobytes of RAM. And it's in a 169 pins uh, UFBGA package. There are also some uh, SPI flash and SPI RAM on the board. So there is 512 megabit quad spy flash and 64 megabit OctoSpy PS RAM. And there is also a 256K I2 CE PROM on the device. You have the Wi Fi module and you have the uh, Bluetooth module from ST in this one. It's a fully certified Bluetooth module and you can use it more than Bluetooth as well. Uh, there are also some sensors on it. Uh, there are a couple of digital microphones. I think you have one up here and you have uh, the other one down here. And uh, you have a re relative humidity and temperature sensors and I'm not sure which one but they are placed around this area here. There are all the sensors. Um, then there is also a 3-axis magnetometer and a 3D accelerometer and a 3D gyroscope. There is a pressure sensor uh, with an absolute digital output parameter. There is a time of flight and a gesture sensor detector um, up here. So there is actually a small laser uh, sending out something. So you might see something blinking in the display there. Uh, there is also an ambient light sensor. It's up here. 
there are some authentication circuits somewhere on the board. I have not found it yet, but there is somewhere. And there are two user LEDs. These are easily find because they are blinking. And uh, you have a user button. You have one user button there, and that one is the reset button. And you have a USB-C connector there. You have a micro USB for the ST link and a serial port for your debugger. And if you would like to choose uh, another debugger, uh, there is a JTAG uh, there and here. Uh, what are there more? There are Arduino headers on the back side of the board. Uh, you have to trust me, I don't want to change the orientation of the board, but there are. Uh, there are some camera module expansion connectors here. So there are a module for camera and I haven't got hold of the camera yet. Uh, there are some STMOD expansion connectors and uh, PMOD connector as well. I think that one is the PMOD connector. And there is the USB-C I thought I said as well. Yeah. And there is an onboard ST-Link V3E debugger programmer. Uh, there is the connector and uh, the device itself is beneath on, on the other side of the board. I have loaded the STM Cube IDE and I thought that we just try should try to uh, flash down some of the example projects that are uh, delivered from ST. And we start as usual by closing all the projects and uh, when they look like this, like folders, they are closed and uh, won't inflict on anything here. So we go with File New and STM32 project. Now we are under the example selector and we go with the board. And it's this one. And we go down to the project that are uh, default delivered when you get the board from the first time. It's called IoT HTTP Web Server. So it will host a small web server on uh, the STM32U5 microcontroller. So we go with next. And it gives us a project name and we just say finish. So the project is created for us up here and it's open. And there is a documentation readme file where we can read what it intends to do and how to use uh, the demo. Uh, so whenever you look into any of these demos, uh, open the documentation file to see what the, document, uh, what the application would like to showcase in this case. Uh, I just try to build it to see if anything happens. And it builds uh, with zero errors and zero warnings. Now when the project has been compiled, we can see down here in the build analyzer the, the RAM and the ROM uh, demands on the microcontroller. And the RAM is used by 9% uh, with 76 kilobyte. And so there are still plenty of RAM left for other applications. But the ROM is, you see, it's a 2 megabyte device that we have on, on the microcontroller controller but it's filled to 77 percent and uh, with 1.5 megabytes so it's a huge footprint in the microcontroller so then you can think about what is taking all that memory so if you go into memory details uh, you can see that the the rom here uh, you go down it says are our data we can expand on that and we can see where it's consuming the memory. So you see there is a couple of bytes. It's nothing to concern you. But then here, there is a CSS since it's a web page. So for CSS, there is a buffer. It consumes 312 kilobyte. And then there is a other buffer called chunk. And then there is a font buffer on 78 kilobyte. But then there is an image buffer on 500 kilobyte. So it's mainly the web page that is consuming all the memories. But it's it's good to have a conception on where is the memory is uh, going. 
So now we try to uh, build uh, de debug the project. So we, we hit the small bug. And if you get this message, it means that you have not done it uh, prior. And this is the first time and there is no profile for the debugger. So we need to create that one. So we hit that small triangle down there. And we go with debug configurations. We double tap on this one. And it says there are IoT HTTP web server and uh, the ELF file. And we go under the debugger. And we can just see that it uh, get holes of the of the J serial uh, ST link serial number there. Uh, and if we now hit enter, it will start download. And since it's a big file, it will take some time. Uh, this ST link uh, built in SVD is not the fastest, so it takes some time. But you see the progress bar down here. So eventually it says uh, download uh, verified successfully and uh, if we go up here it says it's running already but there is a small uh, resume button up here. So now to see if there is something happening on the board. Uh, if we take in the board we don't see much on happening on the board at all. Um, this one indicates that the serial wire debugger has some communication to the board, but there is nothing else happening. And this is a power indicator. Uh, but what we need to do is uh, get an, um, a putty uh, running as well. So, and actually, I'm not running putty, I will run Terraturn. Like so. And uh, I have set it up uh, as um, serial port uh, 115.200. And uh, now, if we run, if <laughs> this is a bit funny, whenever I press this one, the debugger, uh, the IDE will come in front and uh, Terraturn will be hidden. But um, I will make it like that again. Okay. So now the web server is running on the board and it looks here for every uh, web uh, Wi-Fi interface it can see. Uh, it's only 2.4 gigahertz radio uh, and I have now created a small Wi-Fi uh, called PR Tech Talk. So we will use that one. And you need to have local echo as well configured, otherwise you don't see what you're writing. And now I'm breaking every uh, rule in the world when it comes to password. And this is a one only password. It will be deleted before <laughs> the, this video is uh, released to the market. So it's A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. And hit enter. Okay, so the, the Wi-Fi has started and we have created an uh, connection and uh, got an IP address from the DHCHP server on the, my server. And uh, it creates some TCP sockets and it's now listening for incoming connections. So we have an IP number here. So I'm going to start a small um, uh, Chrome session uh, where we enter this 192.168.0.2 Zero dot two five one. But now we're talking to the STM32 microcontroller, and um, it's have some blinking LEDs there. Uh, I'm not sure what they are indicating, if they are indicating traffic or whatever, but um, you don't see too much on the board itself. But this one is now running on the web server on the device itself, uh, on the microcontroller, and they are not using uh, the PS, uh, the Octal Spy Flash or the Octal Spy RAM. They're using everything in this one, but it's a 1.5 megabyte big size, and the communication is then through the Wi Fi chip. Uh, on the, the demo here, we have the home button, and uh, we have a small cog up in the right corner where we can select dark mode 
or light mode uh, yeah whatever you want and there is also some sensors here and uh, in this case i think that my temperature sensor is a bit uh, offset offset is uh, not correct uh, because i do not have this warm in my room it says 30 degrees uh, the electrical bills are too heavy so i can't afford to have so warm i'm in sweden uh, but it if i put my finger on the device it should rise at least yeah so it indicates that there is something going on there and we can also do the air pressure and that should be around 1000 millibars yeah and there is also a humidity sensor under the board So it samples data more or less all, all the time. And uh, if we uh, go home here, we can scroll down. There is uh, some more information. Uh, yeah, something that I didn't mention, it was up to 125 degrees ambient temperature sensor. Uh, 125 ambient temperature on the, the microcontroller, it's quite good as well. And it says something about the uh, content on the board. So that was the demo. And if I hit uh, ST here, I think that it, yeah, it goes to, it leaves the microcontroller and goes out on the web instead. Uh, so now we have that one. And if I just hit reset, it just starts over again. So this concludes this small demo of the development board from ST. Uh, there are a lot of demos that you can use with this uh, board. Uh, we have not scraped on the surface yet. We have not done any own development on it. We have just loaded a demo software that is already uh, created for us from ST. But if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider to subscribe. I would like to grow my subscribers uh, a bit. And um, if you have some thoughts about what you would like to see in the coming videos, uh, just give me some message in, in the comment section and I will take a look at that. So until we see that the next time, uh, stay safe. Bye.